we're now going to have a bit of an overview of the Information Systems and Databases Unit, which is the second core unit of the Information Processes and Technology course. Once again, we're going to look at it in a mind map format based on the syllabus for IPT. So, at its core, we're talking about databases and how basically databases can be the backbone of a lot of information systems, storing all the data about various components of the information system. What we look at first are information systems themselves, and specifically the characteristics of an information system and the purposes of an information system, which we use as a guideline to understand what the information system is all about. From there, we need to look at the organization of data and how it will be analyzed. And basically, databases themselves organize data in a very specific way. And they have a variety of views for viewing data. Okay, so it can be entered into a table. And in that table, we can see all the fields that are separated and each row being a different record. But then we can also look at it in a form view as well as a report view and run our queries. The purpose of information systems also kind of correlate with the different units of this actual course. So they can be used for processing transactions, providing information, assistant decision making and managing information. We then actually look at organization specific and that's one of our information processes that is at the core of this unit. So we've got to look at firstly, what were the traditional non-computer methods as well as computer methods, the advantages and disadvantages of the non-computer methods, the two main categories of databases that we actually look in this unit being flat file and relational databases, hypermedia and data modeling. For our traditional methods, we look at things like the telephone books, how although the telephone book is a paper-based system, things are still organized in columns that reflect fields. We have our name area, then we have the address area, the phone number, okay, and all each row is a different record, just like in a traditional database. Okay, for our computerized methods, we talk about a flat file database, which consists of a single table. Database management systems, which is the actual software we use for manipulating databases, for example, Microsoft Access, and once again, Hypermedia. We understand that a flat file database is comprised of four elements. Okay, there are files, which is the whole database file, records, which is each new piece row of data about a specific entry, fields, which is the categories of each um, entity, and then characters, which is the smallest unit of data in the database, which is every single individual symbol. We then look at relational models in where we are linking tables together in order to reduce data redundancy and increase data integrity. They're comprised of entities, attributes, and relationships for a relational database. Okay, the entity being the table, the attributes being the fields, and the relationships being one-to-one, one-to-many, and many-to-many. -many. The linking through actual foreign keys, which is basically when a primary key is taken from one database and then entered in as a foreign key into another database, and that's what's used to establish our relationship between two data entities. And then our different views, as mentioned before, of forms and table and uh, report. Hypermedia, we need to understand, is all the linking we use, because obviously we often do have online databases, and they are all linked through Hypermedia, where we click on something, and then we go to another file location. So it's made up of nodes, which are the actual terminal themselves, and then the link that you click on to go to another location. Okay, a URL is the actual method for addressing using the internet. Okay, and then metadata, data about data. So the creation of data dictionaries, which give us details about an actual database. So it is data about data, hence the name metadata. There's also metadata in websites when you first open the page and you'll see a meta section. Then we have our data modeling tools. And once again, these are all could be classified as metadata. So data dictionaries for breaking down all the different fields that will be in our database schematic diagrams for showing us relational database, showing each individual entity and the actual fields that are used for the um, relationship, the different attributes that are used. So the primary key in one uh, entity and how it's a foreign in another entity used to establish our relationship. This is used to achieve normalization. When we turn a flat file database that consists of redundant data and poor integrity by splitting it into multiple tables, we then are doing a process known as normalization because data only has to be entered into these tables once and then we can reference it later on. So ensuring consistency and improving on that integrity. And then storyboards, how a storyboard is created okay, to show uh, hypermedia and its navigation. 
The next part is looking at specific case studies of databases. So actual information systems you're supposed to look at as a part of the HSC course is a school database with its entities of teachers, students, classes and subjects, an RTA database which could have automobiles and then the registered driver's licenses and the actual registration of their cars to them, and then a video store database with borrowers, the videos, and then an actual rent going through as its entities. Okay. The next part is the other information processes and specifically we'll look at displaying and this displaying is achieved through basically the different formats we can output data. So one method is through doing a database report where we might have run a query and we have our results. We display that in a report format which puts it in a printable format which can then be printed off and given to a participant so that they can follow up on the actions of the report. Okay, but we also have our form view too for entering data and our QBE view, Q query by example, for running queries. Uh, our storage and retrieval is the second information process that we're looking at as a part of this unit. So basically, hard data is actually saved and where it is saved and where are we calling it from in this database model. Okay, once again, the database management system, the actual software we use for running our databases like Access is at the core of this. And when we try out our different database activities, we use a database management system. We need to know the difference between direct and sequential access. Sequential being the old Tate method where we have to fast forward and rewind to find specific uh, parts of data. Whereas direct, which is on magnetic disk and optical disk, as well as um, flash memory, where we can specifically select the piece of data we want to view being a lot quicker and efficient. We have online and offline storage, which reflects basically cloud and local storage. We have to look at the different storage mediums. Once again, mentioning tape, optical, um, disk, uh, magnetic disk, and flash memory. Okay, uh, the difference between centralized and distributed databases. Okay, which uh, is important in understanding that a centralized database has a file stored in a central location and all the nodes are actually accessing the file which can often lead to bottlenecking. So sometimes we make a few versions of the file and put it in multiple locations and then people at these different locations access their specific file and then we sync all three master files in a distributed manner in order to reduce these chances of bottlenecking. It's also good too because if there is some sort of error only one site goes down whereas the other sites can use the other versions of the master file. Encryption and decryption for the secure sending and receiving of data. Specific database tools for running queries and searching and sorting, such as query by example and structured query language for the actual language itself of running queries, and then our hypermedia tools. Okay, um, and then finally for our hypermedia tools, the different types of searches we can do with them. The last section, okay, are the issues related to information systems and databases. Okay, so because it, we are talking about data and specifically how vital data can be in today's society, we need to know that when we do use other people's data, we are acknowledging it from other sources. The Freedom of Information Act, which allows use of people, of the public, to know what information is stored about themselves on government um, databases. Privacy principles and how people da people's data needs to be kept secure. How data can be needs to be quality, that we constantly review the data we have in our database and update it if actual elements have changed. So if I've got all the records of students within school, they may have moved houses in the year. So I need to resend out forms to parents so they let us know that data has changed. The fact that data is accurate and has come from accurate sources. So have I just picked up data off Wikipedia or have actually gone to people and asked them specifically information? Okay, and then what validation methods are in play to ensure that when data is entered by the data entry operator that it's entered correctly. Okay, and then data matching and cross-linking data from multiple da databases to ensure data is consistent and we don't have mismatching data stored in different locations. Also, there's trends emerging in information systems and databases. Those of data warehousing and data mining, specifically when we get a lot of old archive databases and we mine these databases, okay, and look at patterns in order to see trends and help us predicting what we can do in the future. Okay, a big technology for achieving this is what's known as online analytical processing, also known as OLAP. Okay, this is used for analyzing archived data, which may be stored in a data warehouse. And when we actually analyze the data, it's known as data mining. Okay, this has become a, a great tool because now we can look at all the past trends in data and help us pr uh, predict whether we need to make changes to our own strategies 
in order to maximize maybe on business or potentially environmental issues. We also have online transaction processing, which is used for live databases while they're being used. Okay, and this allows us to check on the data when the system is being used on a live database. So this has been a comprehensive overview of the entire uh, unit of information systems and databases. I hope this has given you a good outline of all the terminology used in this unit. And you can see what terms have come up quite a bit. I hope you are able to see what connections exist between certain terms in order to help you structure answers that could potentially be asked within a HSC. So good luck with it.